Uh, welcome. Uh, this is Nick Rashby. He is the president of, and he will tell you, they answer the phone, AJA. So if, if you want to know how to pronounce it, it's AJA. Just ask Chris. Just ask me, because I asked him. And uh, Nick's going to talk about ProRes and the AJA Scion camera. That's right. Go ahead. Thanks, Chris. So thanks for taking the time. Thanks, FCP Works, for inviting me. Um, as he said, I am Nick Rashby, the president of AJA. I've been uh, with the company for 12 years. And um, he was hearkening back to my days as a reseller in the Bay Area when I suckered him into buying something. And he's still trying to get his money back. <clears throat> So as Chris uh, intimated, I'm going to be talking about our new Scion camera and as it relates to Final Cut Pro. Um, AJA, if you don't know us, we have a really great long history with Apple and Final Cut Pro. We were the first to do HDIO on OS X. Um, all of these firsts, um, including a lot of partnership, technology partnerships with Apple over the years. Um, lots of good stuff. We love Final Cut. It's a great, great tool. As you well know, ProRes. We were also the first with ProRes um, on the IOHD was the first device to support ProRes in hardware encoding. Uh, that was launched by Apple when um, they first uh, came out with ProRes, which was great here at NAB. Uh, the Key Pro was the first field recorder to s support ProRes recording. And the Key Pro Quad was the first to do 4K uh, RGB recording as well in ProRes. So lots of firsts for us. And that's probably enough back padding for now. Um, so the Scion was a natural evolution for us. It takes basically the best of all of those disciplines that we have in a very Apple-centric workflow. And we created what we think is a really beautiful, unique camera. <clears throat> so this is it in profile. This is it here. It's actually pretty small for what it is. It's an actual production camera, um, lots of good uh, features. I'm just going to skim over a few of them. But um, this was introduced last NAB. It shipped at the end of last year, and it's been going really, really well. So what is it? It's a 4K Ultra HD, 2K, and HD camera. Um, it does shoot Academy 4K as well as Ultra HD. And the 2K and HD are oversampled from the full 4K sensor. So uh, you get beautiful oversampled images, and also if you put a uh, it doesn't affect your lens focal length. So if you put a 50 on there, it's a 50 in 4K. It's a 50 in HD, uh, which is pretty nice. Tons of connectivity. That's really one of the hallmarks of AJA is we just love putting BNCs and HDMIs and all kinds of stuff all over things. And they're always all active. Um, the Scion is no slouch in that department. Um, just tons of connectivity, I really think, more than any other camera on the market. And we tried to think of it logically. We didn't just put a bunch of glue a bunch of stuff on there. I'm an old camera guy. Uh, John Thorne, who's the uh, camera designer, he and I are both come from camera background shooting 35 millimeter film. And we just really wanted to make a camera that resonated with film shooters, uh, but with the ease and simplicity of a digital workflow and put things logically where they should be. So there's video and power up front because you're going to be driving monitors, just lots of little touches like that. There's Thunderbolt to be able to suck raw right out of it to a laptop. Um, we just introduced some new firmware to be able to uh, bring raw right out of the camera to um, our IO 4K, which is a Thunderbolt 2 IO device. So you can plug that into your MacBook Pro and in the field be recording raw. We also have new partnerships, which I'll be talking about. So we support all flavors of ProRes uh, except XQ. So we do ProRes 444444 uh, and all the flavors of 422, um, including Proxy, which is really nice. And we do in-camera up to Academy 4K, 60 frames per second. So pretty powerful stuff. Recording to those little pack drives, which is this little baby, uh, robust media that we designed, um, SSD-based, uh, was successfully used as uh, with the KeyPro Quad, so field proven, um, warranted, rated for thousands and thousands of insertions. Um, pretty good stuff. A guy I know does a demo where he pulls it out and throws it across the room and puts it back in. I'm not that brave. <laughs> I'm going to bill him the day it breaks. It hasn't yet. <clears throat> so. The pack media I just talked about, uh, great price performance as well. Um, really good stuff. Comes in 256 and 512 gig capacities. Tons of room. Um, 
for ProRes files, and we have a packed dock where you can plug it in and get USB 3 and Thunderbolt 2, connect, uh, excuse me, Thunderbolt connectivity uh, right to a Mac. And because it's based around our friend ProRes, as you well know, it's widely compatible with tons of post-production tools. Just, and that's obviously a really small sampling, but I didn't want to put 7,000 logos on the screen. So here at NAB, we introduced a new image reel, and I just wanted to play that for you now. So we think it's a really nice camera. We think it creates really filmic, lush, beautiful images that are high resolution um, with the look that people want. But we're here to talk about Final Cut today. I didn't want to spend too much time talking about the Scion, but it's really how the Scion relates to Final Cut Pro. So that's a poor guy named Andy Bellamy that works for me, um, which you know I already won strike against him. But He's actually the marketing guy behind the Scion. And we were getting customer footage in from around the world. So a lot of that stuff is from London, from Tokyo, from Vancouver, from Northern California, obviously, um, other places as well. And we were just getting customer footage in to assemble this reel. And it was very last minute. So what tool were we going to choose to put that together was, of course, Final Cut, just due to the speed and the ProRes, the native ProRes workflow that it has. So we were getting files that are 2398 or uh, some 25, um, the, all that slow-mo was done in camera and uh, we were getting it all on our pack drives. So poor Andy had to cut this together with me leering over his shoulder. Um, he has a iMac, the new 5K Retina iMac. Uh, so we were getting, like I said, pack media in from our customers in the field and we plugged in one of those little pack readers. We had it connected up over USB 3 nice and fast. We had a Thunderbolt 2 RAID on the other side, and we had our IO 4K daisy chain through uh, Thunderbolt 2 driving an Ultra HD monitor. So nice, simple setup, no big deal. Um, and really, we were just going through tons and tons, hours and hours and hours of customer footage, and we wanted to make something really short, right? That's about 90 seconds. And it was the speed of Final Cut of to be able to just throw down native ProRes files in the timeline, audition them, try different things, do replace without affecting the rest of the timeline. Um, it was so fast and so powerful, and we really, really were compressed for time, like I can't say. And you know, these are screenshots of when we were working. Also, 
being able to throw in and quickly position graphics. You know, we had like a little lower third. We had a bug um, in the corner, um, which was sort of faded out. We were trying different things, um, adjusting the audio, playing with timings. It was just so fast because it was native ProRes. It was unbelievable. And one of the things that was really cool is the London stuff came to us shot at, um, they did the in-camera slow-mo, 50 to 25, but this was a 2398 project. So we just threw it in the timeline and Final Cut dealt with it. It was great. And it just instantly conformed. We didn't have to go through a lot of trickery and did the background rendering. And we just kept working and working and working and working and hammered this thing out. And poor Andy was actually able to print it at some point. Um, but it was really just the ability to do the quick auditioning that was so, so fast for us in the native ProRes. And we just kicked out a 444 4K master, which we uploaded to Vimeo. We made a uh, HD 444 submaster for projection. And that's what I was showing here. Um, that's a ProRes file that's embedded in the keynote. And then we uploaded it to Vimeo as well. And just all within Final Cut, we didn't have to leave it. We did very light correction. One of the things about the Scion is it was designed to, um, in camera, give a very realistic color rendition and light rendition of what the eye sees. And we really designed it to be that way. So there's sometimes, depending on what mode you're shooting, you don't have to do a lot of post-production to it, um, which is great for quick turnaround stuff. So we did very light correction right within Final Cut. We never left it, just did, lifted the mid-tones, did a few things, and printed it, and off we were. So super fast, super easy. <clears throat> Here at the show, we have a few pieces of news around the Scion. We have new, firm, new firmware with new features, in-camera LUTs, um, uh, what else? Oh, gosh, all kinds of good stuff that I can't even think about. Um, improving white balance handling. So this has only been shipping for four months and it's our second significant firmware upgrade based on customer feedback. And I think that's pretty amazing uh, to be turning around really significant firmware updates in that amount of time. We also have several new AJA RAW partners. So we output RAW at up to 120p 4K uh, out of these S4 3G SDIs. And there's all kinds of companies that can interface to that, including external recorders like Convergent Design and Atomos, which here at the show announced support and field recording for RAW. So you can record any flavor of ProRes internally um, at 4K and kick out RAW as well um, to really popular and easy to use recorders and use them as monitors as well. So really, really flexible. We also introduced a program uh, called TriScion, which we rolled out yesterday and already we have an incredible response. So what we've done is we just want to put Scion in the hands of the people that use it um, in a very, very easy way. So we invested a million bucks creating 100 cameras that we're just putting in people's hands in North America for free. So there's a web page that you go to and you say, hi, I'm Nick. and I'd really love to use a Scion. Tell me a little bit about yourself. You hit submit and uh, we select the people that seem, you know, that they're going to use it the best. Um, there's, it, it, it's available now, and uh, it's pretty getting, like I said, this overwhelming response uh, from high-end people, film students, all kinds of people. Um, so this is a really great program to just put Scion in the hands of people. We find that when people shoot with it, they just love it, and it has a really unique, lush, beautiful look, and this super easy to use ProRes workflow, and super convenient raw workflow as well. Um, our raw files are wrapped as cinema DNGs, so really uh, widely um, compatible with a huge array of tools like Resolve and other uh, Mac desktop products. So lots of good stuff going on with the Scion. We are also getting out on the road. The camera designer, John, that I mentioned before is gonna be going around North America. Uh, he's gonna be in San Francisco and these other places uh, very soon, no rest for the weary. Um, and so he'll be able to engage with people and answer the most difficult and challenging questions uh, that people may have. So. Oh God, I'm not John, leave me alone. No, these will be easy ones, <laughs> seriously. So, who do you see, what's like the ideal, who did you design the Scion for? What, mm -hmm. type, of, what type of shooter? It's a great question. So we designed the Scion for people that, where a DSLR might not be enough, um, an Airy might be a little bit out of their reach. Out of their reach. Well, 
it, you know, it, it's, it's a really unique camera in its space. So in, you know, John and I are a couple of old guys, we shoot film, in our minds we wanted to make the digital version of the Airy 16SR, um, which, you know, Airy did, but we wanted to do it too. Um, but just, you know, it, it's really a lightweight, portable camera that can be used in tons of different situations. And I think I heard you say 120p at 4K? Uh, in I mean? RAW, yeah. In RAW. It does 60p internally. Wow, and then uh, dynamic range? Is 12 stops. 12 mm -hmm. stops, okay. Beautiful stuff. Thanks. I, th I was very good. So now, did, did we screw up the music? What happened there? Was I don't know. Distorted? Something was a little distorted. Okay. So. But beautiful. Nice. Pro res, it's a terrible format. No, no, no. no. I, it's, it, you know what I liked about that piece? It wasn't like the typical, like, and they'd be like, rah, 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 you know. It's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of confidence in the imagery, and that's why yeah, we, that's why we did itself. very little correction on it. Just wanted to present it to people in sort of a calm manner, judge it for yourself. Yeah, you can even download the Ultra HD file from Vimeo. A couple of questions. Mr. Cantor. Global Shutter? Uh, it is Global Shutter. Mm -hmm. You betcha. Nick Rashby wants to try a few Scions where we make movies in L.A. He's, 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 he's going to be uh, filling out that form a few times, I think, under a few pseudonyms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, probably not in this camera, yeah. Um, not a complete package, it's a complete AJA package. So we make uh, like rods and rod holders and handles and stuff, grips and, you know, stuff like that. Um, we're going to put an Anton Bauer battery plate on it and send it to you, and then, you know, you would need to provide a viewfinder, lens, batteries, sort of standard stuff that shooters are dealing with. Yeah? What, what, what kind of kind of space is uh, this like the Alexa, you have to apply the, the, the loops for... Mm -hmm. it, we, have, for we have multiple modes, so you can shoot in... Um, what we call normal internally. And that's really what a lot of this stuff was. Just, you know, only one of those shots was shot with a flat mode, which is, you know, more like log. Um, and the rest of it was shot normal. And we find that most of our cu customers shoot normal just because you go, wow, it just looks so good. And you do this very little amount of correction. But we do offer flat modes um, and different gamma modes for people that want to work that way and have those kind of pipelines. And then we have a video LUT internally. so your viewfinders and stuff are showing you more like a video, you know, Rec 709 kind of color space, but you're recording flat or, you know, whatever disabled gamma ProRes. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. What was your decision about going with ProRes versus DNSHD for the recording medium? Um, for us, you know, we were just the, really the first adopter of ProRes, and we love that codec. Um, it's beautiful, it's lightweight. Um, we've just had great experience with the multiple products that we based around it in hardware, and it just became so ubiquitous on the production side. You know, we like to think a little bit because of our KeyPro and a lot because of Aerie, um, that it just seemed to be the most widely accepted way to go. You know, we'd love to have a camera that had five billion codecs, but if we're really gonna just concentrate on delivering, you know, the one that most people want, seems like that's ProRes.